Um, I think the biggest one from the very beginning when we designed the sound the drawing board, it's um, like how you draw the boundary of layers, right? So what do you want each layers uh, to do? What are the responsibilities of, uh, of each layer? Um, you know, the overall goal of Norris Network is a decentralized uh, economy. So we want to build that future of decentralized economy. So, um, so we decided the, the layer one protocol should be really about um, like sort of like a smart custodian of, um, of value and assets, right? Uh, just like in centralized, um, uh, you know, parallel you have you know, banks and, um, you know, brokerage companies that sort of just keep custody of people's money and assets. So in the decentralized, and then you have transactions like exchanges and so on. Um, so in the decentralized economy of the future, we believe that there needs to be a layer whose sole responsibility is to make sure that if I preserve, you know, a piece of digital assets in there, it should be long-term sustainable and secure, and I can trust that, right? So it's not about just transactions, but just to sort of custody of, of value. So that's really sort of layer one. And then layer two is what complements that, which, you know, very, um, you know, more superior transaction capabilities for processing and uh, and also like application specific things like privacy, uh, you know, finality of transactions. And, but then that's where people can choose. Developers can think about what are the trade-offs that I want, right? So we feel like that's more of a cohesive uh, design that separate concerns um, then allow people to you know make decisions best for their own uh, use cases yeah um, I think in the beginning the challenge um, you know to try to push everything at once is maybe too challenging so um, so we have to listen to what they want and then you know most of the larger companies are more comfortable with you know taking smaller steps to build something more private or permissioned uh, in nature, um, but it could be also accessible to the public, right? Um, and then, you know, I think when this whole space grows and we see more use cases, and then um, it really, you know, private versus public is like intranet versus internet, right? So sure, you can get utility from intranet in the company and, you know, uh, productivity gains, but then uh, what we see in the future is, um, uh, companies will really see the value of their assets coming out of that silo, right? So have a more community to contribute to these assets and also sort of interact with other uh, companies and use cases. You know, example that, you know, we sometimes, you know, tell our customers, um, uh, let's say you're Starbucks, right? So issue points in, on the blockchain, it's easy and all that. But then your points, will, for, if you don't get it out, then your points, will forever stuck in your own uh, ecosystem, right? So there's no way people can sort of compose and create interesting things and add value to it, um, right, over time. For example, I, if you could get, if I could, I could get your uh, uh, Starbucks points out on the public blockchain, and maybe, you know, I'm an air, you know, airline company, maybe I want to say, hey, if you're, you know, Starbucks, you know, point owner, then I give you extra, you know, incentives um, unexpected holiday or things like that. Maybe I can, you know, you can get free candy once you have Starbucks, um, things like that. So people can create more interesting things and these will be more value add to the assets otherwise stuck in uh, private networks. Yeah, I, I think if you talk about more enterprise use cases, um, you know, a lot of them are, you know, this is very new to them. So this is why we build a lot of the tools for them to use. And, um, you know, I think uh, if we first go into their company and talk about, you know, their use cases and, um, you know, what their plans and you're probably in phases, probably start something more private. But anyway, um, so we'll come back and we have we give them the SDKs and the tools. Um, but eventually, you know, they will come around and, um, you know, see the value and then down the future. Uh, you know, all the, you know, we call layer two blockchains or private blockchains or permissions. Uh, that can be like one, one variation of the layer two technology we talk about, right? And uh, so the stuff that we build will be well connected to the neural common knowledge base um, and to more, you know, like I said, to uh, composition business cases and engaged community and there's just more value that could be added there. 
Yeah, so, uh, so so that's actually one of the the, the advantage of the of the virtual machine that we we use. Um, we call it CKB VM because we don't have a <laughs> a better name for it. But you know, if you have a better name, <laughs> then let us know. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a very low level virtual machine, right? It's basically implement. It's a simulation of RISC five computer. Um, so it's very low level, so that it allows you to sort of roll, drop your leaves and then build anything that you want. So in a way, you can think about this. You can think about like the blockchain protocol itself. You know, part of it is sort of hard coded in you know the, the binary that we di distribute, right? And some other parts are really you know the rule of the blockchain really are uh, implemented with the VM itself. Again, it's because it's a very low level VM. Uh, so you could build like existing C libraries and you can just compile them down to uh, RIX-5 binaries and that that will be okay. So this allows us to like have a hybrid approach and then sort of future proof that if there is a new cryptographic primitive, then um, you know we don't have to hard code that into our you know client binary to distribute and do a hard fork and have all the nodes upgraded. On the other hand, we can, you know, either we or people in the community can uh, have their own version to put them in as part of the VM, um, virtual machine. Then, you know, it doesn't have to get permission from the developers. Um, so it's just much easier to evolve over time, uh, more flexible.